Hey guys, I'm Jose de Jesus with the National Pork Board. Today, we're gonna be roasting a pig in La Caja China, which is my favorite way to cook a pig. Let's go. Before I show you how to cook a pig in La Caja China, let me tell you about the inspiration behind it. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, and pork is king in Puerto Rico. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up, we would go uh, visit family um, in, in the town of Barranquitas, which is up in the mountains. And every weekend we would be roasting a pig. It was part of our tradition. Our family enjoyed that experience. And it was something that I grew up with. Um, I remember um, we would all take turns turning the pig around and some of the adults would be playing dominoes, others would be tending to the pig, uh, some of the cousins would be playing, others would be tending to the pig. We would all take turns. But it was an experience that I always enjoy and I always wanted to bring back with me when I moved to the mainland. We did that as a family and friends uh, growing up. And you know, when I think about lechon or pork, I think about lechon asado. It's the way we grew up eating pork, right? Mainly roasted uh, and as a pig roast. And, and so to us, um, it, it's a tradition and for me actually is what inspired my Instagram account uh, Lechon Asado uh, was the fact that I was able to live those experiences with my family and friends for years so when I moved to the mainland I want to continue that tradition which is why we tend to roast a lot of pigs over here uh, where I live and so you know I always kept my, my grandfather's recipe which was pretty simple but always a crowd pleaser and I hope to share that with you guys today and um, you're able to do the same with your friends and family. This is how we used to do it um, back in, in Puerto Rico. And um, I think what you'll find here is that it's pretty simple, but yet very tasty. So let's dig in. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put a coat of olive oil on the pig, the entire pig, rub it really nice. Um, I do that so all the rubs that come after that, they stick to the pig. So we'll start with that. Getting a nice little coat throughout the pig everywhere the hands right here this is a smaller pig this is about 17 18 pound pig so obviously not not too big but i like to do that with uh, with all the pigs or every single one of them that i cook then we're going to flip it quick and we're going to do the same thing again All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the rub. Here we're gonna put half a cup of salt. We're gonna do a fourth of ground pepper. We're gonna do a fourth of a cup of fresh oregano. We're gonna do a fourth of uh, garlic salt. And my all-time favorite, this is the sun seasoning. We're gonna do about an eighth right here. This thing is just magic right here. You can find it anywhere in the store. Um, I don't think there's a family in Latin America, perhaps um, anywhere else that can cook with, without. I know in Puerto Rico, we cook a lot with that, whether you're making rice, whether you're making a meat or, or you're cooking anything uh, along those lines. But um, that ingredient is always a must. Now what we're going to do is uh, another magical ingredient which is actual garlic. So what I have here is a head of garlic and this is a mortar. This is very popular in, in Puerto Rico because we use this to make uh, mofongo which is uh, fried smashed plantains and is a very typical dish back home um, that we make. So we're going to start right here and we're going to start smashing some of this. Like I said, I have about a head of garlic here and we're gonna smash it. And this is gonna be one of the key ingredients to bring that flavor from the pig. Got a few more. So now I'm gonna bring this uh, smashed garlic into here where I had my, my rub made, my seasoning for the pig. And now I'm just gonna mix everything here. This is how it's gonna look. All right. 
All right, so before I put the rub uh, on the pig, what I what I like to do, and you don't uh, you don't have to do this, but this is the way I, I I do my pigs, I cook my pigs, is I like to put some incisions around some of these muscles. So you have the fresh ham over here. I like to do in the shoulder, and I like to do that so I can get more flavor in there. Uh, when I'm cooking a piece of meat like this, um, sometimes you know they're, they're a little big, and you want to make sure that that you do that. Um, again, not a right or wrong way to do it. That's just the way I, I was taught and I learned uh, with my family. I know a lot of people also inject them uh, to get that flavor throughout. That's also a good way to do it. But again, this is how I do mine. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna make some incisions right there. And if you see over here, what I like to do is when I get um, some of those around the pig, I'm gonna start uh, seasoning in there, okay? So that I can get that flavor uh, going. I'm gonna do some around here. I'm gonna do the ham. Right here, I'm gonna do this other side. Right here as well. We'll do right here, and even some around here. Okay, we'll get some nice, um, some nice seasoning in there. Right around here, and that's normally what I what I try to do. If you want to do a couple more feel free um, this is a probably a good area to do it right here there's there's a lot of meat in here so probably a good way to do it okay all right so now let's get this going you see that nice color that you know red yellowish color from um, from the sazon that's what I'm looking for okay now and the incisions that I made over here, I'm going to stuff right there, some seasoning. Okay. Right here, we have another one. Right. Here's another one. All right. All right. That's a nice little coat right here of our rub. Now we're going to flip this baby up. And we're gonna do the same thing. I also like to put some cuts right here, incisions. Here we go. And we're gonna do this. I always tell people that I rather, I rather over season than under season, particularly with a piece of meat this big. Here we go, we're almost there. Right here, we're gonna put another coat. Right here. And there you go. So there you have it. This is uh, the way it's gonna go into La Caja China and we're about to get that done here. And we're gonna put it skin down because if we put it the other way around, it's gonna burn the skin. So we don't wanna burn the skin. What we wanna do is let it cook there. Um, we're gonna put a, a probe here to make sure that when one of the hams uh, hits one about 190 or so, that's our cue that we can flip this pig around. Now we're gonna stick the probe in, one of the ham, right there. We're gonna close this. There's some hooks over here that we are going to do. It's gonna make it easier when we wanna flip it. Uh, whenever we wanna flip it next time, it's gonna be ready to go. Now we're gonna put the lids on. We're gonna light some of this charcoal. I put about, maybe about eight, nine pounds or so of charcoal. Uh, this is not a big pig, so I wanna make sure that, you know, we go slow and we don't burn it. But what we're gonna do is Spray some uh, charcoal lighter. And you can use, I use briquettes on this. You can use lump charcoal. Lump charcoal burns a little bit hotter. And I like the ashes from the briquettes because it kind of serves as insulation as you're cooking the, the pig. So it doesn't burn um, towards, the, towards the end of the process. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna let it sit there for a few minutes so it can soak in all the charcoal and then we'll let it up. Then after about 20 minutes or so, uh, when the charcoal is burning pretty good, uh, that's when we're gonna start keeping track of the time. But 
we should have this pig done in about three hours. All right, so this briquettes are burning pretty good. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spread them out so that basically the entire pig is getting heat underneath and it's uh, burning uh, evenly. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, now we're gonna start taking time and we'll see how this goes. And as they keep burning, and we're gonna try to add about five or six pounds every hour. All right, so it's been about an hour or so, and now we're gonna throw in some more charcoal. We're gonna spread them out. All right, so the probe says 190 or so, so we are gonna flip this baby now. There we have it. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the lid back on, put a little bit more charcoal. Go ahead and put a little bit more charcoal. Not much, because I don't wanna burn it, okay? Just a little bit more. This is a little pig, so it's not, doesn't require too much charcoal. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes already. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the ashes by lifting and shaking the charcoal grid. Just gotta be careful because it's really hot. Now the charcoal serves as a buffer so you don't burn the skin, but because now we're at that point where we're gonna toast the skin, we need to remove all these ashes. And it's pretty easy, just get a bucket like this. We took the ashes off, and now we are going to put the grid back. And now this is what gonna to toast the skin. We're gonna add a little bit of charcoal, maybe a pound or two, um, and that's about it. This is a small pig, so that's all we're gonna do. And hopefully we get a nice uh, crispy skin after the fact. We're gonna, now we're gonna spread them out a little bit. And we're gonna do this for another 20 minutes or so. And then we're gonna check the skin. All right, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes since we last added charcoal. So now we're gonna check to see if the pig is done. Oh yeah. Looks really good. Oh yeah, look at that skin. Looks great. All right, so there you have it. This is the pig I wanted to put, to cook to, today for you guys. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna try a little bit of that crispy skin to see how that turned out. Look at that skin. Mmm, really good. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut this up quickly. It's a small little pig, right? So we don't really have to do too much, but I like to start right here on the ham. Look at this, this is what we call in Puerto Rico a pernil, right here, okay? So we can chop it, but I'm just gonna keep it that way. Come right here as well. This is the shoulder. Look at that. We can chop that if we want to. Here you go. Some of the ribs right here. The other pernil or ham. And we can start cutting this down if you want to. You know, there's a bone right there. But this is right here. 
how you're served back home in Puerto Rico, okay? The other shoulder right here. In Puerto Rico, we eat everything. We eat the shoulder, we eat the chank, we eat the feet, everything. We don't, we don't throw anything away. And if we get leftovers with this, we'll do some pulled pork, uh, sandwiches, pan con lechon. I mean, you can eat this with anything you want. You can do, you can do uh, rice and beans, uh, whatever your favorite side dish is. You can eat it. You can't go wrong. Pork pairs well with just about everything. This is what I call a chong asado right here. It's nothing better than le chong asado, in my opinion. It's really hot. There you go. So, there you have it. Well, thank you for watching. I'm Jose de Jesus with the National Port Board. Um, it's been a pleasure sharing with you my culture, my tradition, and how I grew up eating lechon or pork. And thank you so much. Please follow me on Lechon Asado on Instagram. Thank you.